what was once a major trading center for various Northwest Indian tribes has changed a good deal since Lewis and Clark paddled down the Columbia River in 1805. The Dalles, Oregon, is now a rather prosperous community of 11,000 just east of the Cascade Mountains. It's hot in the summer, and it's cold in the winter. But agriculture, new business brought in by the Dalles Dam, and family roots seem to keep the conservative little town rolling along. The town folk are really quite ordinary people. They get upset easily over things like fluoridation, leash laws, and higher prices. At first glance, the Dalles, Oregon, seems to be just another ordinary American town. If there is any one thing that sets the community of the Dalles apart from other communities around the nation, it's probably that some people here say that they've seen a strange creature a creature weighs up to 800 pounds and stands uh, even up to eight feet tall. He's generally known as Bigfoot up and down the west coast. He showed up in Indian legends for 100, 150 years back. And he's also shown up in reports as far south as Stockton and as far north as the Alaska border. Stories of sightings range from just a glimpse to what you might describe as almost unbelievable. The 49ers searching for gold in California mountains talked about the huge man-like animals. There are some reports that several were shot. One Canadian logger claims that he was carried away by one in the dead of night and kept captive in a box canyon for several days before he was able to escape. Undoubtedly, there are sightings that aren't talked about for fear of ridicule. In recent years, there have been flurries of reports, most a little more believable than the Canadian logger. The last reports came around 19 months ago in the Dalles. Since the best place to get information in a small town is the newspaper, we visited Jim Weeks, managing editor of the Dalles Chronicle. Like many newspaper editors, he is highly skeptical of what seem to be exaggerated or fabricated reports. Well, we have gone out to these areas ourselves and uh, have uh, checked around, and uh, we, we haven't come up with any evidence ourselves. We, we go by what we're told on these things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we, we aren't there when a lot of these things happen. And uh, because of the nature of, of the subject itself, uh, some people who do know something about it will not come forth and talk. How do you personally feel about Bigfoot? I really don't know what to, uh, what to feel about it. Uh, I would think that because we don't see Bigfoot uh, does not in itself mean that he, that he isn't there. Uh, I'm in the woods quite a bit and hike a lot of mountain trails and there are lots of animals that I know exist there that I don't see either. Even though the Dalles Chronicle has not run much on Bigfoot, the people of the community know about the creature and everyone has an opinion. I don't believe there's such thing. I've been in the woods too much and I've never seen anything that looked like it. Oh, I don't know. I just believe, I believe he's there someplace. I believe there's more than one. And it's kind of exciting. Well, yeah, he, 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 that's all right, but uh, I can't hardly, I can't hardly believe it, but I think uh, some of it, I think, is uh, kind of sort of uh, exaggerated. Well, I don't know. I think it's just all hooey myself. From what, uh we've seen and heard in this area here that uh, there certainly is something to it. Oh, I think it's for real. A lot of people think that it doesn't make sense and that it's all phony, but I, I believe it. I don't think there is any such thing. I think he's here among us. I personally, it's hard for me to believe that there is such a thing, but then uh, I wasn't a witness either. But this man I know who apparently saw him is a man who is as sane as I am or as sane as you are. And he swears up and down there is, so who's to say? About 80% of the folks we talked to in the Dalles seem to feel that Bigfoot actually does exist, which makes me kind of wonder how you feel about Bigfoot. Well, whether you're totally committed or not, perhaps you should wait for tomorrow night when a young man tells us what happened to him one dark night four years ago. It just might influence your thinking. Terry Richard, KCRA News, out here in Bigfoot territory.
for at least 40 years, and that's probably an absolute minimum, there have been first-hand reports of the existence of the creature known as Bigfoot. Indian legend up and down the West Coast and many different tribes describes a creature sometimes known as the fish stealer, sometimes known as Sasquatch, but all of the legends seem to point to the creature known as Bigfoot. His name comes from tracks left. Now this is a plaster cast, roughly 17 inches long. This one, according to one scientist, came from a creature that probably weighed around 800 pounds and stood around eight feet tall. Certainly one can easily say the footprints are fake, and maybe they are. But whoever is faking them has to be one of the most dedicated persons in the world. The footprints have been found over hundreds of thousands of square miles in all kinds of weather conditions in every month of the year, and sometimes 40 miles from the nearest road. Any boss who had an employee with that kind of dedication would burst with pride. Also, one anthropologist says the prints are so perfect, not for a man, but for a creature the size of a Bigfoot, that whoever is making them has to be a genius in anatomy. One more thing, our dedicated faker apparently is also running around in a huge ape suit, sometimes miles from the nearest road, and in 100 degree weather. It's rather unlikely, but it is possible. One young man who says that he has seen Bigfoot and says it was not a man in a suit will probably be a believer until he's laid to rest. Brian LeBritton was camping with a friend in a gravel pit one night four years ago. The two were going rabbit hunting the next morning. LeBritton clearly remembers what happened. I don't know why, but I just couldn't get to sleep. I felt uh, cold. It was in the middle of June, so it couldn't have been too cold out. But anyway, I finally started to doze off, and then I, oh, some rocks probably around this side here come rolling down the cliff, something like that. And that's what woke me up. So I stood straight up in the sleeping bag, and I grabbed my shot, shotgun, which was quite close, and my light. And I shone it up there, and the beam of the light hit the creature right in the face. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed the, the light and the handle of the gun, and I shot at the creature several times, and it seemed to back off and dust would fly off his chest when the shot hit him. It acted as if I would come up and to shove you. Just it, oomph type. Yeah, just the pressure of the shot hitting seemed to shove him back some, but it had no real effect on him. How do you describe what you saw standing on the top of that cliff? Uh, very awesome. Just, just huge and enormous and very ugly. How big in, in the sense of the chest size or the arms and so on? I would say his arms were as big around as my legs probably, and probably about three and a half, four feet across here. Very large. And how tall? Anywhere from seven to eight feet. Will anybody ever convince you that what you saw didn't exist? No, I'm afraid not. No, I know what I saw and I do not suffer from hallucinations. Over the past five years or so, some 16 people, including Brian LeBritton, claim to have seen Bigfoot around the Dalles. Each time a reported sighting reaches the Dalles County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Rich Carlson goes out to investigate. And that's somewhat unusual, for most law enforcement agencies simply dismiss reports of sighting out of hand. But the Dallas Sheriff's Office has a different attitude. Well, uh, we take the position that uh, we haven't really gathered any physical evidence to really indicate that there is such a thing here. But you do go out and investigate. Though. Yes, sir. And what do you do when you go out if you hear of a sighting or tracks? Um, we interview the uh, uh, people who made the sighting. We go to the site itself and uh, try to gather evidence, which we've done in the past right up here at Crates Point. Now, you've seen some of these footprints. What do you think? Uh, I don't know what to think, but uh, I did see what appeared to be footprints in the dry grass. But due to the rocky area we have here, it's, it was unable to get a cast, you know. Now, you've talked to a lot of the people who yes. say they've seen it. Yes, sir. They seem really reliable. They know what they saw. But law enforcement people are not the only ones investigating reports of Bigfoot. Over the past half dozen years, a core of dedicated, serious Bigfoot investigators has developed. With the backing of three wealthy men, one investigator is roaming the Pacific Northwest to try to find answers to Bigfoot. Tomorrow night, meet Peter Byrne, former professional hunter in Africa, conservationist, 
and now devoting three years to the search for Bigfoot. Terry Richard, KCRA News, The Dalles, Oregon. The scientific community hasn't exactly snapped up the idea of the possibility of Bigfoot. In fact, few scientists will even consider it. One man who has done some research and feels the creature does not exist is Dr. Philip Hawks. He's with the anthropology department at California State University in Sacramento. The primatologist says so far there is no evidence to support the existence of Bigfoot. On the other hand, one of a few scientists who believe Bigfoot is real is Dr. Grover Krantz, anthropologist from Washington State University. Krantz says he's anxiously waiting for the day when he can get his hands on just one bone that might be from a Bigfoot. For with that one bone, he says, he will be able to prove Bigfoot exists. Dr. Krantz thinks there are about 150 of the creatures up and down the West Coast, and he feels that's more likely than someone faking thousands of prints over a hundred years. Well, that's possible to fake footprints. Uh, footprints could be made uh, by man using some kind of a device. Uh, footprints alone are not proof of the existence of an animal. Well, first, I think uh, a great many of them are faked. There are a number of them, however, which show characteristics that would be necessary in a 800-pound uh, individual that I don't think anyone could have predicted except a first-class anatomist. How about the reports of, of sightings? How do you view those? Uh, again, uh, people see things, many things. You have even three people watching a single event may give you three different reports on it. Uh, flying saucers are sighted regularly across the country. Uh, there have even, we have people that have gone for rides in flying saucers. I don't think that the majority of the scientific community believes that uh, flying saucers are visiting the Earth. I think a lot of them are legitimate, and a lot of them are uh, fanciful, uh, imagination, and outright liars, of course. But I think perhaps half of them are uh, real sightings. If 1% is correct, that's enough. That means somewhere between 5 and 8 people saw it. And if one person saw it, and if it's really true, well, that proves the animal. Now, I estimate that there may be something like 10 times as many people who have seen them than have been reported. So uh, the number of sightings actually numbers in the thousands, probably. Why is it that apparently the scientific community is not investigating this? Uh, if there is anything that appears to be evidence, uh, wouldn't it be their duty to go ahead? Well, there are reputable people that are looking for Bigfoot or the Yeti that uh, lives in Asia and have been for at least 50 years. Every uh, bit of evidence that was at one time considered to be concrete, skins, uh, skulls, and so on, have all turned out to be those of bear or leopards or something else. And so uh, a reason for not uh, investigating it was that it is, isn't that it has not yet been conclusively shown to exist. Something that is unexpected or unusual requires more proof than something that is uh, more normal. And a giant hairy hominid is about the most unusual thing that... Therefore, uh, people just assume that it couldn't possibly be. It requires more proof. What is your basic argument that uh, you think that Bigfoot doesn't exist? Well, speaking as a primatologist, I feel that Bigfoot would have to have certain specializations to live in a cold, even a sub-Arctic climate in some areas of the world where this type of animal has been reported that are not seen in primates. Uh, animals that live in this environment usually have a very heavy and double layer of fur, which no primate has. Uh, all of the living apes and all of the fossil apes that we know of lived in the tropical environments of the world. Man is the only animal in this class that has been able to move out of this tropical environment, and the reason for this is man's culture, clothes and fire. Have you come to the conclusion that it definitely does exist? Well. I would almost state that. I would rather say that I can see no possible alternative, and therefore I conclude that they do exist. There really isn't much proof that Bigfoot actually exists, but then on the other hand, there isn't much proof that says that he doesn't exist. And all the speculation will probably continue until one of two things happens. Either somebody proves that for the last 100 years or so they've been traipsing around some of the most remote territory in the western United States with huge feet on making tracks or been running around in a huge ape costume or 
somebody brings back a Bigfoot, either dead or alive. Well, until either one of those two things happen, you and I are going to have to base our opinions on what little evidence exists or what seems more likely. Oh, by the way, one more thing. If you're out hiking or hunting or in a lonely campground some night and you get a chilly, eerie feeling, look around a little bit. Who knows? In the time it takes to pan a flashlight around, you might become an instant Bigfoot believer. Terry Richard, KCRA News out here in Bigfoot territory.